Now that step one is pass fail. Residency training programs in orthopedics, radiology, and even internal medicine, they're now gonna look to step two CK as a way to stratify their students and decide who they want to train. Some studies are even coming out showing that the step two CK exam score is a good predictor for how well a resident will perform during their training. It's no secret that program directors are now gonna look to the step two CK as a way to filter through a long list of applications. The average step two CK score in 2020 for matched applicants from US, MD, and DO medical schools range from 236 to 256, depending on which specialty you're looking at. A 256 or higher would put you in a really good position to apply to the specialty of your choice. What's up you guys, it's Tim here, and in this video, I'm breaking down my study strategies that help me score a 264 on Step 2 CK. So first and foremost, and probably the most important thing is start early and start with UWorld. I actually started 12 months before I took the Step 2 CK exam. I ordered the 12 month subscription and started doing practice questions during the duration of my third year for each clerkship. I started out with my psychiatry block and the shelf specific UWorld questions for the psychiatry shelf exam. To explain a little bit further, when you have your UWorld Step 2 CK subscription, you're gonna have two sets of question sets. One is a tab that is shelf specific questions. On the other tab is the Step 2 CK. That includes biostatistics, ethics, and other questions that are not fair game for shelves, but are for step two. There is actually some overlap between the shelf and the step two questions. The material that you study for in your shelf exams is high yield as well for the step two. The key here is to study longitudinally throughout your third year. One of the biggest mistakes I made when studying for step one was not starting early enough. And this is one of the things that I did right when studying for step two, which is what I truly believe helped me score much higher. I made sure to get through all of the available UWorld shelf specific questions before the end of the clerkship when I would have to take the shelf exam. And the way I did this was I looked up the number of shelf questions for that clerkship, for example, psychiatry, which is the one I started out with. And I looked up how many practice questions on UWorld that there were for that shelf exam. And I divided it by the number of days that I had from the beginning of the clerkship to maybe two days before the shelf exam to give me enough time to take a certain number of questions per day until the middle of the week before that Friday shelf to also give me time for some review. This usually worked out to 15, 25 questions per day with the exception of internal medicine, which had so many questions that I didn't even come close to finishing all of them in time for the shelf exam. I did one single pass of all the questions and then another full pass of all the questions that I got incorrect. I repeated every single question I got incorrect until I got that question right. It's crucial to keep exposing yourself to questions that you struggle with until eventually it becomes an area that you're strong in. UWorld has a question on a concept or topic that means it's important and high yield for the step two. If you know UWorld front to back, that question bank alone is enough to give you an incredibly high score on the step two. One of the mistakes I made when I studied for step one is I jammed too many question banks into a short amount of time and probably ended up getting a little bit information overloaded instead of really honing in on and mastering the UWorld questions and repeating those until I had them down cold. I can't emphasize enough that completing UWorld alone is all you need to score as high as a 280 on the step two trying to jam in other question banks will have diminishing returns for your retention. And that's because UWorld has questions that are the most accurate to the style of questions that you'll see on the actual USMLE exam on test day. This is why it's really the gold standard of practice question study methods. But another pretty important study method that I used throughout my third year was a free online course called Online Meded. And Online Meded is done by an internal medicine physician. He makes quick videos with only the very high yield stuff and he tries to leave out the fluff. He leaves out some material that is needed to get questions correct on UWorld, but that makes the videos really short and easy to get through 
during a busy third year clerkship. He has a playlist of videos that's relevant to each third year clerkship. So for example, for the surgery clerkship, I budgeted out time, not only for all the UWorld questions, you know, 20 questions a day, but also to get through a certain amount of videos every day and take notes in my Microsoft OneNote app. Getting through his videos allowed me to make somewhat of an outline of the most high yield material with the structure of his videos. As I got through my UWorld questions and got questions wrong or learned details or material that I didn't previously know, I would fill in the UWorld information into the notes that I previously had written in my OneNote from the online meta videos. So by the end of each clerkship, they were fully fleshed out with all of the additional material that was important according to UWorld. Over time, I actually used this OneNote as a living document for all relevant information for step two. For example, if I learned an important statistic about the presenting symptoms of cholecystitis from a divine intervention podcast, which I'll get into later in this video, I would add that information to the online meta notes on acute abdominal emergencies. So by the end of each clerkship, and really by the end of my third year, my OneNote was basically a consolidated encyclopedia of all the notes from Online Med Ed, UWorld, Divine Intervention Podcast, Emma Holiday's lectures on YouTube, and any other source of information like lectures from attendings during third year clerkships. I did use OneNote to create a separate notebook when it came to dedicated step two study period. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Now, toward the end of my third year, I actually had my mentor recommend to me that I go on my orthopedics away rotations a month earlier than I had planned. So it turned out that I was only going to have two weeks off for dedicated step two study time. So I really ended up spending about three weeks studying for both my family medicine shelf and step two. About five weeks before I was scheduled to take step two, I read through the actual step two CK discipline specifications that are on their website. They actually break down the percentage of questions from each discipline. Psychiatry questions would only make up to 15% of questions, OB-GYN up to 20%, pediatrics up to 25%, surgery up to 30%, and medicine a whopping 60% of questions on the step two. This is super important to understand because I had to focus a lot more time on medicine than say psychiatry. It also just so happened that my best shelf score during my third year was psychiatry and my worst one by far was medicine. I actually measured how important each discipline was for me to study by coming up with my own metric to measure how many points I can gain by studying each discipline. It was a calculation based on my UWorld percentile rank in each discipline, my shelf score percentile ranking, and the percent weight of that discipline in terms of number of questions in step two. For me, this calculated overwhelmingly the discipline I needed to spend the most time on was internal medicine. So once I had that all figured out, it was really time to put the rubber to the road. That's when I started to complete all of the remaining UWorld questions that were step two specific. This also ended up including a lot of internal medicine shelf questions because I had nowhere near enough time to finish the numerous internal medicine shelf questions that are on. World. In the five weeks or so, I did about 120 to 160 questions a day. Each 40 question block takes one hour if you take it time, which is what I recommend doing to save yourself time and train yourself to complete questions in an average of 90 seconds or less. I made sure to review each question that I had taken before the end of that day so that I could start the next day fresh with a new set of 120 to 160 questions. A really important way to get through these reviews quickly, when you get a question right and you know why you got it right, you click to the next question. Then when you get to questions that you got incorrect and you're trying to figure out why you got it incorrect, you don't need to spend all your time reading through the entire higher explanation of the question. You really just need to figure out why you got that question wrong. And if necessary, keep reading until you fully understand what you missed. Take a note in your OneNote and move on. That's all the time you need to spend on that review. Each time I either guessed a question correctly by luck or got a question incorrect, I literally wrote a one to two sentence explanation in a page that I had prepared in OneNote and moved on to the next question. I created a new notebook in OneNote specifically for step two dedicated study period that had one page for medicine, one for psych, one for surgery, one for peds, OB-GYN, and so on. 
I would scroll down to the bottom of the question, see which discipline it's for, go to the dedicated page for that discipline in my OneNote, write down the concept or fact that I missed and move down to the next question. Then the next morning while I was eating breakfast, I would take my iPad and scroll through the OneNote of all the notes that I took from the yield questions that I had taken all previous days. Now this is where the discipline specifications come in. Because medicine was the discipline I needed to spend the most time studying, I always started out reading through the medicine notes. Each morning during breakfast and sometimes during lunch, I would try to get another pass through all of the disciplines, but if I ran out of time and needed to get back to you world questions, go for a workout or just take a call of duty break or go to baseball practice or text my fiance to let her know I'm still alive. <laughs> all right, time out. I just realized that I've been recording for the past like half hour without any sound and it's one in the morning. So I'm gonna get some sleep and I'll catch you in the morning. So going back to my OneNote method, getting through all my internal medicine notes first, then surgery, which was my second most important, then peds, and so on. I just treated it as a spaced repetition style of my own and reviewed it as much as I could because going through those notes isn't extremely cerebral, it's just reminding yourself of concepts and facts. So at a certain point with my UWorld questions, I finally finished all of the step two specific questions and all the internal medicine shelf questions that I had missed. And then it was time for me to do all my incorrects for a second pass. And then if I got any of those incorrect, I did a third pass of the questions I got incorrect again until I got every single question right. For some questions, this took up to six tries. I'm telling you guys, some of these questions, to get them right, you don't need to be a genius, you just need repetition. So finally, once I got the last incorrect question, I did what's called a hard reset. So the UWorld website lets you do one reset of your subscription, which marks all of the questions as brand new, unused, and unanswered. Pulling back questions that you might have gotten right the first try several months to a year ago and haven't seen since then. I did the hard reset and got through as many as I possibly could, but since I only had two full weeks off for my dedicated step two study, I only got through about 55% of the questions for a second run through. While in a perfect world, I would have gotten through 100% and maybe that would have boosted my score by a few points. So if you have more time and you're dedicated, then I would probably recommend trying to get through 100%. Every concept that I was unfamiliar with or got wrong on a question, I had taken notes on in my OneNote document that I've been talking about at some point in the previous 12 months. So all the concepts were familiar to me at least a little bit by that point. So this brings me to a really important point. When you get closer to test day, you gotta start taking simulated step two exams. I did a total of six, and that was the three NBME comprehensive clinical science self-assessments, the two UWorld forms, forms one and two, and one that popped up as a free option from AMBOSS, which was the AMBOSS free practice exam for step two CK. I took two of these practice exams each week for the last three weeks leading up to my test. You need to simulate the test setting as closely as possible. For me, I made sure that my roommate was gone for the day when I took the test, that it was a quiet environment. I had earplugs, which they let you use in the test centers. My phone was off and put away because they're not gonna let you bring your phone in. I made sure to eat food and drink coffee only before the test and during my simulated timed breaks. Because Step 2 CK is an eight hour exam Bruh. and seven blocks of up to 40 questions each, each practice test was four blocks of 40 to 46 questions. So none of them actually had the full seven blocks that is in Step 2. But nevertheless, I think that it really helped build my stamina as a test taker, especially when it came to answering each question in 90 seconds seconds or less. Probably the most important aspect of these full length, well, at least partial length practice tests is familiarizing yourself with the pace of 90 second questions and making sure that you can arrive at a confident answer in that time and move on to the next question without second guessing yourself. At the very least, when you know the answer to a question in these simulated environments, you start to build the confidence to answer the questions that you know the answer to as quickly as possible and give yourself more time for more questions during the same block. So the last really important thing I wanna mention about these practice exams, some of these NVME self-assessments have been around for a really long time and the questions they ask are pretty well known or 
in general are have just been taken so many times by so many smart medical students that the curve is really tough so take the score with a grain of salt accept the questions that you got wrong learn as much as you can stash those concepts in your notes and move on to the next one my first nbme practice exam I got a score that was like 35 points lower than what I expected and <laughs> and I was having basically having a heart attack until I like looked a little bit through Reddit and realized that a lot of other students had the same experience with that same test. But in general, no one practice exam is going to predict your score in the step two, although there are some tests that are better able to predict your final score than others. Actually, the step two practice exam that actually has been found to have the highest correlation with your eventual step two score is UWorld Form 2. And as much as I believe that, my, my eventual step two score was actually two or three points higher than what I got on that form. So still take everything with a grain of salt. And finally, the last resource I wanna talk about that I thought was really important for me, it's more of a supplementary resource. And it's one that I talk about in my five apps that saved me time in medical school video. I'll leave the link to that here. It's the Divine Intervention Podcast. While you should not definitely not treat this as your primary study strategy for step two, I thought it was great for when I was taking study breaks, <laughs> study breaks from UWorld and UWorld Review, or when I just wanted to get up and moving, go on a run, go on a workout. When I went on those workouts, I was able to just put on my workout earbuds and listen to the Divine Intervention during my run. It's super convenient. And for me, I found it to be a pretty low stress way to reinforce the material that I was learning. I would highly recommend this podcast in particular because Dr. Divine is an incredibly gifted teacher, is able to rattle off high yield step two concepts off the top of his head in seconds at a time. Um, it's unbelievable how much material he gets through in a 20 to 30 minute podcast because of how quickly he maintains associations between different concepts that are related in certain ways. He makes sure to stay on the cutting edge of what the USMLE is looking for and what they're planning on testing on that year. And just in general, um, he really has his finger on the pulse of what's going to be tested, is very proactive in giving you a heads up on the material you need to keep up with. Divine, as a token of my deepest gratitude, please accept this dank pair of Thug Life sunglasses. So in conclusion, if I were to summarize the three words that would best describe how to study for this test, it's start early, repetition, and repetition. And lastly, please, 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 please take breaks. Get enough sleep, eat well, and get workouts in. These I felt were crucial for keeping me sane and from burning out during a very intense and work intensive dedicated step two study period. Dr. John Dial in Life Lessons from a Brain Surgeon recommends seven to nine hours of sleep per night for anyone aged 18 to 25. So really take that to heart. Don't think that you can get away with five to six hours of sleep because sleep is where your learning becomes solidified. Get your cardio in. It's been proven that doing cardio increases a protein in your brain that leads to higher brain plasticity and easier learning. In Spark by Dr. John J. Rady, he actually discusses the protein BDNF, which is essentially a transcription factor that increases your brain plasticity and helps you learn faster. Daily meditation is also another really excellent way to stay lucid and prevent burnout. Do not underestimate the power of sleep and exercise in helping you score highly in medical school. And finally, keep the big picture in mind, whether you want to practice rural family medicine or plastic surgery on South Beach, Miami. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. This is a video I really wanted to make. I really feel passionately about this exam because it opens up so many opportunities for students if you just approach it the right way. And if you want to see my full write-up on the scores I got on my practice exams for step two, let me know in the comments as well. In the near future, I may write up a full detailed study plan for step two CK based on how I did it. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments. I respond to every comment. So if you leave your question in the comments, I'll answer as best I can and as quickly as I can. Well, it is a beautiful 38 degree day in downtown Cincinnati. So I'm gonna go on a run and boost my BDNF. So I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.